is on the hymn, Hark the Glad Sound. It's number 349 in the Lutheran Service Book. And this is a great hymn. It is not, however, my favorite tune for 8 a.m. It is, it's a little bit jumpy, and most of the time those jumps are not in parts of my voice that like to do them at 8 a.m., but, you know. I googled the tune kind of right off the bat when I opened the hymnal. The tune is called Chesterfield, by the way, also called Richmond. You can find the tune information at the bottom of the page. And the first result for this tune, the first descriptor word that I saw for it was the word florid. And what a beautiful descriptor word, right? Very, it's it's um, intricate, elaborate, flowery, which is great. Um, it is also, as part of that intricate, flowery, elaborateness, very jumpy, like I said. There's not a huge range, but you're moving around quite a bit. Not very smooth, but I will say what it lacks in smoothness, it makes up for in brightness and gladness, I guess, if I can use that, which is very fitting for a, a text called Hark the Glad Sound. It is also one of Pastor's favorite tunes, which may be why he chose it as our hymn of the day for this week. Even though our hymnal calls it an Advent hymn, you can see that at the top of the page there. Oh, it's not going to... Yep, okay. It's an Advent hymn in our hymnal, and this is the third week after the Epiphany. So, but it's a favorite, right? It does definitely sound very Advent-y. I mean, it talks about the Savior coming. It talks about the glad voice that announces the coming of the Savior. It tells us to prepare for that coming. Not to mention the references to glad hosannas and the Prince of Peace definite Advent vibes in this hymn, which is why it ends up in that section of our hymnal. But where pastor is using it for Epiphany, and the hymnal says that it's for Advent, our text author actually wrote it for Christmas. So, I mean, are we all wrong or are we, are we all right? Well, I am going to say that we are all right, and we will get to that in just a second. So yes, it was written for Christmas. It was written specifically to go with a sermon on Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19, which is part of that story of the rejection of Christ in Nazareth when he read from Isaiah 61, a prophecy about himself, and then uh, told everybody that he was the Christ. And then remember how all of his friends and neighbors tried to kill him because they didn't like the rest of what he had to say? It's that story, right? Uh, no prophet is acceptable in his own town, I suppose. But yes, so our hymn text is based on that scripture passage, written for a sermon on that passage, especially focusing on that quote from Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. And it's written for us by Philip Doddridge. Doddridge was a nonconformist pastor who worked in the first half of the 18th century in a, at a parish in Northampton, England. Now, nonconformist meaning that he was a minister of a congregation that was not a congregation of the official Church of England. And he, apparently, writing hymns to go along with sermons was something that he did all the time. Doddridge wrote over 400 such hymns in his lifetime. They were published posthumously by a friend of his. And unfortunately, or maybe, I don't know, I haven't read the rest of them. For some reason, they have not all survived. Most of them are not sung anymore. But this text, like I said, that's based on Luke 4, this text does survive. And we have four of the original seven verses printed in the Lutheran service book. And while Luke 4 was a Christmas tide reading for Doddridge, uh, it is our gospel reading for the third Sunday after the Epiphany in Series C, which is why we're using it today. Not just because it's one of Pastor's favorites, but it does fit with the text. But in these four, well, original seven, but in these four verses, Doddridge really does just repeat what Jesus reads about himself in Isaiah 61. The first verse of our hymn is an introduction. It calls on us to listen and to prepare because Christ has come. And then verses two and three are exactly what Jesus read about himself. Exactly what Isaiah says Jesus comes to do. In verse two, he comes to free the prisoners, the prisoners who are held in the bondage of sin and death. Then in verse 3, he binds up the brokenhearted and brings good news to the poor. Literally, just Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. And then those verses are all closed out with Hosannas to the Prince of Peace in verse 4, which is a cry that our text says rings out here on earth as well as in heaven's eternal arches. And that's it. That's the whole hymn. It is short, it's sweet, and it reinforces the reading for the day. So you really, it doesn't get much better than that. 
So which is it? Is it Advent? Is it Christmas? Is it Epiphany? Well, like I said before, let's say we're all right. It's all of the above because those promises that Jesus fulfills that come to us from Isaiah 61 and all over the Old Testament, those promises are fitting for every season and every day. So thanks so much for watching this video on this Advent Christmas Epiphany Holy Week. You can make an argument in there. Him, I hope you guys learned something and we will see you next time. Bye.